We wrap up the year looking at the automotive designs that are gifts that keep on giving. And we look at the gifts that we want to take back next on Talking Cars. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Munchler. I'm Jonathan Linkov. I'm Gabe Shanhar. And I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. You're Jonathan? <laughs> really? Uh, this is our year-end episode. This is when we go back and we take a look at the cars that we liked the most during the year and the ones that we didn't really like at all. Just a warning, this is our personal list. This doesn't have to be the top rated. They don't have to be reliable. This is just what really sticks out to us. Ryan, how about you kick off? What cars did you like the most this year? I have to go first, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to start with the most obvious one. I'm going to call it my 911. <clears throat> it's your 911. I call it mine. Your Porsche 911. My Porsche 911. I, um, I mean, we don't even have to go into it fully, but that is the car that stuck out to me this year. I, was, I got to buy it, and it was everything I had hoped. Um, That's good. It would be a real shame if it was disappointing. It wasn't disappointing at all? <laughs> no, I, I just love that car. That was one of the best ones this year. Gabe Second. disagrees completely, obviously. So. <laughs> well, I chose Ryan to buy that car for a reason. So, yeah. yeah. No, it <laughs> sounds awfully biased, but I just really love that car. Um, it, was, it was a blast. What's your number the, two? Yeah. The, um, the second car is going to be the car that's behind me, M235i. No, yeah, that, not that, that one. That, that, that almost made the other list. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually bought that car too, kind of weird. But wow, that, interesting. Yeah. Gabe knows his customers. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a tremendous car. Uh, more, way more realistic in terms of price and the performance is almost there by a 911, um, at least on the street. For fun, fun factor, that car is tremendous. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that BMW M235i, that's going back to what BMWs yep. yeah. always yeah. excelled at, always you know, that yeah. livability, some semblance of practicality, yeah. and the sheer joy of driving. Yeah, but you, you can get in that car every day and drive it every day, assuming you put some snow tires on Could it. you do that with a 911? I could. I could. At least Free. now. I'm, 20, I'm still 28 years <laughs> <Free> old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm still 28 years old, so I guess I, maybe, you'll, you know, as I got older, maybe not. But mm -hmm. um, I could drive that car every day. There's other it ports. is loud. It's a you know it's loud. It's a little bit rough, but it's a, a hardcore sports car. So no, the M two thirty five is definitely silkier. Definitely. Oh yeah. Easier to live with. Way easier to live with. Choice number three. Back to another Porsche, the Macan. I mean, that's the one to live with every day. That that is that car. <laughs> I love driving that car. It sounds good. It shifts like a, a Ferrari. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. It's a really good drive. dual clutch. Yeah. It's a great dual clutch, and it's, yeah, it's, it's not practical. It's outrageously priced, but... Um, well, it's more practical than a 911. Yeah, it is. But for an SUV, you'd, you'd expect, you know, I, I can barely sit in the back seat, but I, I don't ever sit in the back seat, so what do I care, right? <laughs> no, it's a, that's, a, that's an awesome car. For like a Porsche, it's practical. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost affordable for a Porsche, too. Yeah, right, too. Well, yeah. yeah. Everything's relative, I guess. Those are my three yeah. that um, stuck out to me this year. Not a surprising list. Right. Knowing you, <laughs> but that's, that's okay. Yeah. Mr. Gabe, your list. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to, uh, I mean, it's easy to go to these cars that I've uh, been uh, coming back to. I mean, you can actually see the seat molded to my physique there. Bottom. So, yeah. That's uh, why I couldn't get into some of these cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, I gave the 911 to uh, Ryan, so I'll skip that one. Uh, but uh, I found myself really uh, going back a lot to the Range Rover this year, and I really like that car. At first I thought this is such a pompous, yeah, snub, uh, appeal kind of a car, but... And that's why car. you like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it has a personal car plate that's in the <laughs> right? It's the only plate. That's right. Uh, but, uh, I mean, in, in reality, that car really works. It really delivers. I mean, it rides beautifully. It, uh, it's, it's, it's got great visibility. It has an effortless acceleration. It's, um, it has a great interior, great seats. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful car. Let me ask you, is it worth the premium over an X5? Because, I mean, this year we tested the redesigned X5, which is also a delightful SUV. Right. Um, there are totally... Two different cars completely. I mean, the uh, the Range Rover is a much more of a relaxed, uh, 
cruiser kind of kind of car. The X5 is is, is BMW. It's it's more uh, there's something a little uh, little stiffer and edgier about it. Okay, I can see yeah. that. Um, I'm with you on the Range Rover, by the way. This is the first Range Rover, uh, big Range Rover that I've driven in a while. That's actually kind of lived up to the hype. Yeah, I, I think I, I put my more of my fair share of miles on that car. Um, yeah. So uh, next, uh, I would uh, second uh, Ryan on the BMW M235i. That car is spectacular. I mean, it's fun to drive. It's livable. It's. Uh, I mean, the engine's just super creamy smooth mm -hmm. um the shifter the, the seats everything about that car that is uh, is fantastic and uh the third one i'm gonna break the rules a little bit here because oh. i'm gonna throw two cars and lump them together it, it's the um <laughs> He already had the Porsche. <laughs> I know. He's going to have five cars. I can't count the 911 because. So yeah. I'll count the GTI and the Golf in as one entry here because uh, I mean the, the car is really impressive. The Golf. Uh, here's a car that uh, actually rides more comfortably than a Camry. It's even quieter and yet it handles better than the Mustang. And the fit and finish is. Well, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, is, Wait, yeah, so you're saying that the normal Golf handles better than the Mustang? Uh, in my book, it, uh, and the normal and the normal <laughs> Mustang, the normal <laughs> Golf and the normal Mustang. Okay, okay, uh, all right, and, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the GTI, I mean, that really is an impressive car. I uh, I take that car every. Uh, you probably noticed that yeah, no, every no, weekend my, no, my name the, is on that when car. When you were in the so, Range Rover, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> or the 911, or the M235i. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I got a question the other day on Twitter. Is the GTI worth the premium over the Golf? Well, it depends. If you if you are an enthusiast kind of driver, it's uh, it's not a matter of money. It's a matter of that that's the kind of the right car for you. Mm -hmm. So it, you got to decide who you are basically, right? And how much money you have. Yeah, I mean, the regular Golf is, is, is you're not going to feel short shifted in any way, shape, or form. But well, you should, it's $26,000 yeah. for the one we bought. But, but if you don't want a performance car, you don't want to um, live with some, um, some, you know, firmer kind of ride, louder exhaust, then if it's, if it's not for you, then the Golf would just do fine. Do you have any more? Is that the end of your list? Or <laughs> I'm not breaking any more rules. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan. Ooh, I want to hear this. Thomas. What's on your list, my friend? Um, okay, so I was impressed with the Highlander Hybrid. Kind of a common man's vehicle here in this group wow, of elitist vehicles. I'm bringing it, down. I'm bringing bring it down. down. Just really impressed by it's a, it's it's a significant improvement over the last generation as far as materials, as far as ease of use of the cabin. Really impressed with the mileage, flexibility. I mean, I got two little kids. I have a two-year-old or almost three and almost five. That's not so my fault. So I'm worried. No, I'm you know there's there's other people <laughs> who wrote me into that problem. Um, <laughs> what I'm what I'm thinking about is ease of access for the kids. E things that stood out for me, but also livability in a in a parent's world. Is and they really, really stood out. That stood out for me. And, that there was room for them, they weren't kicking the seats, um, they could get up in, in the vehicle, it wasn't such a high climb, you know. Now if my daughter was here, my five-year-old, she would say Range Rover, because she loves that truck. And she loves Gabe. And so she loves Gabe, well, we'll, we'll, well, that's yeah. another podcast. Um, so that was the first one. Now, okay, is the hybrid worth the extra money? I think the hybrid is. It's um, all the money. It's, it's a lot of money, it gives you ex some more features, um, but I wouldn't go with a regular Highlander at that price, hmm. I, I, I might, I might drop down to a Santa Fe if I was looking for a non-hybrid vehicle oh, really? in that class. Yeah, I like the Santa Fe as well. Um, I mean, it needs to so be I said. Really like the, I like the Hi Highlander Hybrid. I, I justify that vehicle and its size because of the fuel economy. Hmm. Uh, the price premium is not only for the hybrid because the way Toyota merchandises the Options hybrid is only with yeah. the limited. You have to get the limited. Yeah. Top. But I mean, I would, I would get a normal Highlander Limited. Mm. I would probably skip the hybrid, you know, which is another five, six thousand dollars almost. True, but, you know. So your choice is my wrong. choice. Your choice is wrong. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. What's next? <laughs> so, uh, so let's see. The, the other vehicle I was I was kind of impressed with the Mini three cylinder, the Mini Cooper with the really? three cylinder engine. Yeah, I, I was really su surprised and pleasantly surprised about how much performance it delivered with that small engine. You didn't miss the fact that it was one less, one fewer cylinders. Um, and ours had an automatic. I mean, yeah, it was a fun car. You know, it's not a GTI, but again, it's. It's a car that stood out to me like, wow, you know, unlike the, you know, other, other engines, I guess the Fiesta, you know, with its three cylinder and such, like here's a car that shows you can, you can have a smaller displacement engine and a smaller cylinder count. 
Um, and it still delivers fun. You know, I'm not a fan of the mini controls, you know, and I'm looking at things They've that are more better. outlet. They've gotten better, but when you start down here, you know, the bar <laughs> isn't much very high to, uh, to yeah. achieve. Okay. Um, and after that the, is the Macan. You know, that's just a fun car. That is like we wrote, you know, it, it's almost a sports car in an SUV body. It's a tremendously guilty pleasure. I took it on a five day vacation with my wife, you know, plenty of room for stuff, for shopping for the holidays, you know, the comfortable supportive seats, decent, not good, but decent fuel economy. The seats um, in that car are amazing. The, the front, front seats are great. Yeah, they're, yeah. Just, front they're, seats are they're great. No, no tire, you know, drove yeah. up to Maine, no, no problems with my back or anything like that. Really nice. Um, yeah, the radio could be a little better or something like that. But you know, just blipping, worst, blipping down on on the on the you know the um, the paddle shifters and you hear it snort oh, and, and, and and almost backfire. You know that that gives you the visceral feel. And I'll tell you what, it, it's a car that you know you want to attack oddly cambered turns and stuff like that because it is rewarding. You don't feel like whoa, I'm going to be leaning. And like the X5, you get that where it's yeah. sporty, yeah. or even the big Range Rover Sport. You know, it's sporty, but still you feel the mass. Now this thing lower. You know, it, it, it puts the Q5 in that platform in a, in a different place. And I wasn't too sure how the Macan was going to be different than the Q5 mm -hmm. and even the SQ5. Mm -hmm. It's a different vehicle. Huge right. difference. Sure. My list. Uh, <laughs> I like to pick cars I can afford <clears throat> to be with the common man, as they used to say, because yeah, I, 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 clearly I, very, I very much am one. I was amazed by the Subaru Outback. I was not a fan of the 2010 or 2013 Outback. They never got the ride and handling right. It, it got embiggened. It was just... This, this huge thing. Um, it the, was slow as molasses. The, the interior was cheap. Uh, oh, yeah. They fixed all of it. They fixed everything for 2015. I mean, the four cylinder is a nice car for its 27, 28 grand, but our six cylinder is like about $37,000 with everything, all the high tech safety gear you want. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it's quiet. It's got a ton of room in the back. I mean, it's a lovely car. Yeah, the six cylinder completely transforms that car. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't. The four, the four, I'd live the four with is the four fine. Is the four is fine, yep. but the six is really sweet, you know, for the eight people who a year who will buy it. <laughs> uh, the second choice is I'm going to. I shouldn't have made fun of you for cheating, Gabe, because I'm going to do the same, same exact thing. Uh, GTI in the Golf. I drive the GTI, and for lack of a better word, I feel rich. I mean, we bought a top-of-the-line GTI, but it feels nicer than our mm -hmm. Audi A3. I mean, okay. it's just, it's, it's a great seat. It, it's, it's a nice interior. It's fun to drive. I know Mike Quincy did the big thumbs-down thing, but you know what? That's him. That's him. He's the, alone there. That's right. He's not. <laughs> He's there. on an island. That's right. Um, the, the more I drive it, the more I enjoy that car, and I could easily see myself buying one. Uh, third is that M235i. That, that is terrific fun. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to really cheat, and I have, two honor, I have an honorable mention. Uh, I'm oh. going to cheat for you. What about that Buick Regal? No, that was last year. And I'd, it, it, I, I like the Regal very much. Um, but I also like the Chevy SS. Oh, yeah. Chevy SS yeah. is, a, oh. is a lovely, lovely car. <laughs> Big car, fast car, sounds great, plenty of grip, good times. Yeah. Ryan, what don't you like? Um, I actually had to, I had to like really think about the cars that I didn't like, and I have to differentiate them from cars that let me down. Um, so like cars that actually annoyed me. Um, I'm gonna start with the Chrysler 200 uh, four cylinder mm. um, because it didn't know it, the transmission in that car doesn't know that it's a transmission. It doesn't even. <laughs> I, it was just terrible. And then I I, I the, I don't fit in that car that well. I, I feel like I can't see out the windows very well, and um, it's just a boring, terrible car. Um, other than that, it's great. Me. Next choice. Other than that, it's great. <laughs> yeah, other than that. Um, my, second, my second most annoying, I'm going to call them annoying, annoying car was probably the XV Hybrid. Oh, Subaru, the Subaru XV. XV Hybrid Crosstrek, however you say it. Mm -hmm. um, flary, the, the hi, just not a good hybrid system. And the XV was never that great anyway, and this makes it heavier, and um, it's just boring to me. A choppy ride, it's just... Uh, I'm just annoyed because you're spending 3,000 bucks more for just three miles per gallon more. That's... Forgot to mention that's that. That's insult. <laughs> if that. Yeah, yeah. You forget about that, but that's, <laughs> yeah, it is insult. Um, Anything else? And my, the third... I'll give you one of mine. 
That's very nice of you. Because Cape no, is six. <laughs> no, I'm going to... I hope you don't have It's six. another hybrid. It was the Accord hybrid. Oh. I was really let down by that car. Yeah. Because the, the regular four-cylinder we had was tremendous. Yes. Nice CVT, um, just an easy, livable, you know, and it was a fairly inexpensive car. And then the, this, the hybrid's like, it flares up. It's similar to the XV. Flares up. It doesn't feel like it has any power. Hmm. Um, and then it's just boring handling. It's just... It feels different than the four cylinder, even the chassis. It, I don't know what is that much different about it, different. but it's, um, that just that sticks out to me as um, a letdown, major letdown. A car that did let me down, I was expecting much more out of it, is that. The Ghibli. It sounds the good. The Maserati Ghibli. It sounds good, especially when it shifts. That's about where it ends. It was okay on the track. It wasn't anything spectacular. Maserati sounds good too, just the name Maserati. Yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, when we got it, it was like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. Like, you know, you were expect I was expecting it to be like pretty great. No, not so much. I mean, you have Jeep Grand Cherokee window switches in the thing. Like, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, pretty they're much, not, right? They they're, work. The, the, the control, everything's yeah. just like eh. it's very Chrysler. But, Gabe. Yeah, I haven't been going back to the Maserati Ghibli. Um, so, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so there you have it. I'm uh, uh, the Lincoln MKC is probably at the top of my uh, <laughs> disappointments and annoyances because I mean the car really starts out with a Ford Escape, which is great, and uh, and then it kind of falls apart. Uh, I mean it, it annoys me the, that it has just such a short cruising range. The um, the ride is never right, even though it has three different modes, and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, just uh, the controls are so annoying. The my Lincoln Touch that thank God well, soon that's going to be away. retired. Yeah, yeah. that's going away. Uh, so, and the car is no uh, no less expensive than any of its uh, peer vehicles from a much much better uh, that are much better, like from BMW and Audi and uh, and what have you. Yeah, no, I agree with you. The MKC is a big disappointment. What yeah. else do you have? Um, the Chevy Tahoe. The Tahoe really? is, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's an old school kind of a car. It, uh, the third row seat is, is uh, tiny. The car rides stiff. It's uh, all you have, all, all that's going for it is, is it's quiet. Would it the be powertrain better? is, feels so lethargic. If, you, if we had bought it with the uh, magnetic ride control suspension, okay, would that so have Okay, so that's helped? another $9,000. That makes it a $70,000 car instead of a $60,000 car. Even a $60,000, it's a Chevy Tahoe. Well, why am I paying for a Chevy Tahoe what I'm paying for a BMW X5? I'm not Chevy. I'm <laughs> I know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Simmer down. Simmer down. Yeah, it's, right. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, anything else? So, and yeah, um, and one car that really surprised me that I was so annoyed with it was the Honda Civic. This latest uh, freshening that uh, gave it the CVT and the and the odd radio, that car annoyed me so much. I was so done with it after my first drive in it that uh, how can you do that? You know, the Honda Civic used to be like this at the top of like like a no-brainer, a default choice of the top compact sedan in, in that class, and now it's nowhere near that. Um, You're reaching back a bit with the Civic, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, but it used to be like a very uh, crisp, fun car, car to drive, and now it's just uh, such a such a boring, annoying car. Well, it's gone from horrible to not as horrible, but not great either. Jonathan, yeah. your choices? So the Ghibli. Yeah. Um, That's why I parked it here. Yeah, you know, annoy everybody. Yeah. You know, like Ryan said, you know, you play with the transmission, you, you know, it's, it gets it old spits, quick. it spurts, it, it, it yelps, and then. And then you gotta drive it out of the parking lot. And you're like, <laughs> uh, you know, so we'll just cross that one up. Um, MKC as well, in the sense, of, in addition, it gets worse fuel economy than the uh, Escape Limited we tested. It costs titanium. more, uh, titanium, excuse me, titanium. You know, it costs more. Um, the, the transmission uh, shift adjustment, the steering shift adjustments, the uh, um, suspension adjustments, it's all Pandora's box. You know, just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should open that box and go there. Mm -hmm. And like so many others, it's just not right. It's almost Goldilocks like, you right. know. Um, so yeah, that that and the short seat cushion. Just mm -hmm. I have no support. I mean, it's it's worse than these chairs actually. It, there's just no support. Um, the vehicles I really really test are the GLA CLA. Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz GLA CLA. The the CLA small coupe, a uh, small coupe like four door, and then the GLA crossover hatchback SUV. Tiny cost cutting. They have to play in the market, but. 
you know, it's almost, they, 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 it's like the Mercedes, has, their, their floor usually is a bit higher and their floor now, as far as pricing and, and what's standard, is just down as low as it can go and then they start larding on the options to give you any semblance of luxury. It's tight in the back, you, you know, it's, it's, I know it's a two person vehicle or for a, a single who's out dating, but it's just really sullying the brand. I, I, I really, it's they may have to be there for a business decision, but it, it just it's, is lacking. They're very cynical cars. I mean, they look great, but there's just not too much right. to them. Uh, my list, uh, I am most upset by cars that promise people something and then don't deliver it. First on the list is Zach Gibley. <laughs> I'm completely with you. You know, I, I don't want to drive that again. And a Maserati, I should want to drive a Maserati, but you just get in and roar. It just drones mm -hmm. and the, the handling's not that good and the ride is stiff and the interior is really not all that special. It just is, it's a big letdown. Uh, the second car that I think is a huge letdown is the Infiniti Q50. That car, they messed it. They are, Nissan is screwing up Infiniti. I had that on my list. I couldn't the, remember if, we were, oh, if it was the right year grief. or not. I mean, the reliability. Maybe they need another name change. Uh, that, that could do it. I mean, the reliability is bad. The owner satisfaction is bad. The fun is taken out of it. Uh, finally, I'm with you on the CLA, the Mercedes-Benz CLA. Mm -hmm. That is just cynical and sad and... You know, people who are buying it thinking, I can finally get a Mercedes Benz, you're not getting a Mercedes Benz. There's so, no. many, there's so many better things you can get for that money. Yeah, and I, and I think that you're going to see it in that they have a lot of great first year sales and it's going to drop off significantly. I think so. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Our next episode, we're going to come to you from the floor of the Detroit Auto Show. We really look forward to bringing you that show. We'll see you then. Thanks.